two years, Kenya has been in the grip of a devastating drought. Amongst those worst affected are Kenya's over 5 million pastoralists, for whom finding fresh water and lush pastulans is critical for the survival of their herds. But something has been developed. Could something like this hold the key to getting herders around the country through these difficult times? Today, an app called AfriScout is being launched in the town of Kajiado. There'll be herders from all over the region who've come to learn more about the app and take that information back to their villages. I'm interested to see what they make of the new technology. AfriScout is the brainchild of Project Concern International, or PCI, an NGO committed to helping herders cope with drought. Nearly 4,000 people around Africa use it so far, and today it's being officially rolled out in Kenya. Thank you very much for coming. Really appreciate your presence here. Thank you for coming to support and to see. PCI hopes to revolutionize how herders find water by using something 87% of Kenyans already have in their pockets a smartphone. So, what is AfriScout? Who here has AfriScout on their phones? The app accesses satellite maps which detail the water conditions throughout Kenya, updating every 10 days. This is Pajiado, what you're looking at right now, and this is the current vegetative condition. You can also zoom to find surface water. So as you can see here, this is a, a pond that has not yet dried up, right? Using it, herders can see instantly where to target migration and avoid using drier areas which need time to recuperate. To find out more about how the app can help herders, I'm off to southern Kenya, where some Maasai have lost over half their cattle. Joshua Ndaserua has been using AfriScout for three months. Joshua. Yes. Hi, I'm Donny. Okay. Thank you so much for yeah. allowing us to come to your home and join you today. Yeah. These are your animals? Yeah, these are my animals. OK. Uh, he's my father. Pleasure to meet you, Saba. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's my brother. Hello, hello, yeah. nice to meet you. Yeah, he's another brother of mine. Hello. These are my, these are my young boys. It's a pleasure yeah. to meet you all. Yeah. So we're going to get started, are we going to walk now? Uh, there is a milking process. Milking the cows? Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah, after milking, we will go. Here's my mom. Hello. Yeah, hello. I'm milking hello. now. Hello. Yeah. Maybe the cow will be a bit wild when a bit wild. Yeah, when you go near to it. So Does that mean it can possibly yes. kick? Uh -huh. For the Maasai, cattle are highly prized. A large cow can fetch as much as $500 at market, but it's even more valuable as a source of food for the family. It's something that seems so simple, but it's really not as easy as it looks. You need to have quite a good rhythm yeah. and enough strength to make it come yeah. out properly. Yeah. And when you take this milk, it is very sweet, very nice. So when you have a drought like Kenya is having now, mm -hmm. how does that affect your cattle? Last drought, when I migrated near to Tanzania, I lost uh, uh, roughly 15 big 15 cows. cows. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It has a big impact because I felt it, it is very bad, but when it comes to a situation that I cannot control it, I have to bear. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I know today we're going to take a trek, and I'm, I'm hoping that you can show me the, the tool that you've been using now that makes it easier. You just, you just download the apps, and then you, you will see where there is green pastures. Like right now, when you see, this is the place that we are. This is Imaroro. Oh, this is where we are, Imaroro. Yeah. Okay. And you can see now uh, the, 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 the situation here is really becoming dry. Mm -hmm. But when you, you push it this way, near to Urmut, you can see there is a green pastures here. Okay, so yeah. that is the journey that we'll be making. Yeah. We, we, we walk about uh, 44 kilometers. 44 kilometers? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long way to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come. Let's yeah. go. Okay. It's a long trek. <laughs> Maasai, like Joshua, are accustomed to walking as far as it takes to find good pasture, staying away from their families for months at a time. Migration is very difficult, but uh, 
We have to because you cannot uh, just stay because they will die. Joshua didn't have the app last year when the conditions were also extreme. This is one of the cow that I, I lost. When I was moving this one, he fell down here. We, we tried to help it, but no, it eventually it died. That's incredibly sad. Yeah. So you had gone to try and look for water and, and pastures for the cows, but the cow just couldn't make the journey. Yeah. And the cow just collapsed here. Yeah, it, it was a big cow. It was a big uh, five, six liters of milk daily uh, in the morning, six liters in the evening. So it was a real loss for you? Yeah, it is a loss. Yeah. It just, it brings back home just the thought that it's such a difficult way of life because you have to keep on the move to find the water and to find the grazing lands. But in order to move, these animals use so much energy to go from one place to another. So if you don't know where you're going and you're just trying your luck wherever you can, it's incredibly hard for these animals. Yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah. huge difference. Yeah. With almost 30% of his livestock already lost drought, it's even more pressing for Joshua to keep his surviving cattle in good condition, which means finding ample water during the trek. Now we are going to the uh, uh, drinking point. There is a silanka somewhere here, and we need the cow to take water there. According to the app, it's 30 kilometers from where they started. This is a really popular place to come and drink. I see someone else has brought their cows. Yeah. Can we find a place under the tree? Maybe have a bit of a rest? Yeah. I'm quite tired. <laughs> <laughs> so can we see this watering hole on the map? This is Imaro. We came from this place. Mm -hmm. We are traveling. Mm -hmm. So now we are just somewhere here. You can see some somewhere here. Knowing the location of a temporary water source like this could mean life or death for a herd. Um, but the app can make all this much simpler. Are you teaching them how to yeah, use the app? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Because at the moment when you need to look for water for your cattle or for pastures, what do you do? You just go blindly. Yes. So you think you might use it? Yeah. And does it sound interesting? Does it sound like something you would use? Excellent. Yeah. It's been 10 hours and we're into what should be good pasture land. This is a place that we were in the morning in Maroro yeah. and we have traveled all the way from Imaroro to Ormundos. Okay, we yeah. made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not so bad, eh? Maybe yeah. I'm an honorary Maasai, maybe. Yeah, maybe. yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe. Sam, but you can see the difference. It's so much better here, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so much better. This place is becoming more better. So the cows will be able to stay here. They'll have enough food to eat. Yeah, they will stay here for almost one month. Mm. And then after there, we shall see again the map where they shall be green grass and then we shall move. I've had a wonderful day. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm tired, <laughs> but I've had a wonderful day. Sorry. And I must thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now we can move to the homestead because now the sun is setting. Then we shall have a cup of tea and then we leave us. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could use one. <laughs> For the herders with access to satellite maps, livestock mortality has nearly halved. Since Joshua has relied on AfriScout, he hasn't lost any cows to drought. For him, the app has been a real success.